isn't that true? Um, he, we are now, um, obviously, people are, uh, are in a, bit, a little bit of a panic about the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was watching uh, fake news last night, CNN and MSBC, and they're saying this man isn't in charge, he doesn't know what he's doing, yeah. uh, he's been asleep at the switch. Can you disabuse us of that? Sure. Um, and um, people always, you know, like, uh, if there's one thing that people, if someone stops me in the hallway on the way out when I'm leaving, they'll say, Mick, you need, to, you need to say this. You need to tell people what you're doing. And of course, we do all that, um, but when only one TV network wants to actually cover you, um, it's really hard to get your message out. Um, the, our first, uh, the, what, let's see, the, the, in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever, that uh, the, 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 uh, the administration is, is, is caught. We're scrambling. We don't know what to do. We, we were caught unprepared. We have no idea what's going on. That's, that's the narrative, right? Uh, we've, we've put 15 different people in charge. My first meeting with Congress face-to-face -face was probably six weeks ago on coronavirus. Wow. Okay. On corona. On corona. Wow. We had a chance. We invited. We went down to the Senate and down to the House the same day. Okay, I went down with Alex Azar, Dr. Cadlick, Dr. Fauci, all the people you've seen on television, so CDC, HHS, ASPR, all of these, the experts. You know, the word this morning is we're controlling the message and it's a political issue, not a, not, a, not a medical issue, completely false. We take the medical experts down, we put them in front of Congress five, six weeks ago. Five senators show up. 10, 15 members of uh, the House of Representatives show up. We were, we're way ahead. Just who was asleep at the switch, yeah, that's right? That's exactly right. We were accused, by the way, keep in mind, about four, I can't I lose track of time. It's one thing you do lose track of time of, it, when you work in the administration is, I don't know if it was yesterday or six weeks ago, but several weeks ago, we put restrictions on travelers coming in from China, right? We were accused of being, <laughs> accused by some on the left of being racist for doing that. True, that's, I'm not making that up. That was in the press. That, this was an anti-Asian policy um, that we were doing this. Um, just, just bizarre. Um, the, the president took decisive, by the way, the last time that we, we enforced a federal quarantine was 1969 for smallpox. We did it over a month ago in this administration in order to prevent uh, the, the further outbreak in this country. We took extraordinary steps four or five weeks ago. Why didn't you hear about it? What was still going on four or five weeks ago? Impeachment. And that's all the press wanted to talk about. So that while real news was happening, and we were dealing with it in a way that I think you folks would be extraordinarily proud of, and that was serving the nation extraordinarily well, <laughs> the, the press was, 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 was covering their, their hoax of the day because they thought it would bring down the president. The reason you're paying so, you're seeing so much attention to it today is that they think this is going to be what brings down the president. That's what this is all about. Um, I got a note today from a, from, a, from a reporter saying, what are you going to do today to calm the markets? And I'm like, really, what I might do today to calm the markets is tell people to turn their televisions off for 24 hours. Um, <laughs> so listen, is it real? It absolutely is real. There is no question about it. But you saw the president the other day. The flu is real. At any particular time, 20 million people in this country are going to have the flu. The flu kills people. It does. This is not Ebola, OK? Um, and, and I'll tell you what that means in a sense. It's not SARS. It's not MERS. Why do we say that? When you look at the severity of, of diseases, one of the ways you can look at it is by looking at, at, at the percentage of people who get it who die. That's just, I know that's sort of hard-hearted, but that's how we look at it. That's probably how you would look at it. If I get, if I get a cold, am I going to die? No. Okay. Um, if you get the flu, by the way, there's a less than 1% chance you're going to die from it. But it's very, very prevalent, and a lot of people get it. And that's why you hear, on, I think, last 10 years, about 350,000 Americans have died from the ordinary flu, okay? Ebola, I can't remember, is like 50% or 60% fatal. MERS, the Middle Eastern Respiratory System, which we didn't have much of in this country, I think they had one or two cases in Indiana, um, is about 30% fatal. SARS was about 15% fatal. It looks like this disease is someplace between 1% and 2% fatal. Is that serious? It absolutely is. There's no question about it, okay? But it's not, it's not a death sentence. It's not the same as, as, as the Ebola crisis. Right. Now, it's much easier to get than Ebola. It's, it's, that's the one thing that, that concerns us about it, is how easy it is transferred. You can see that with what happened on the, on the cruise ship in Japan. Um, but this is something we, we deal with. This is something we know how to deal with. That's why we sit there and watch the markets, and there's this huge panic. Like, why isn't there this panic every single year over flu? 
um, because people, so many people do get it. We are the best country in the world prepared to do this. We have been preparing for this for years. We go through it every couple of years. There's some young people here. You may remember just a couple years ago, we sent you home from school for a couple days. I know we did that in South Carolina when my triplets were still in high school. We do it on a regular basis. Are you going to see some schools shut down? Probably. May you see impacts on public transportation? Sure. But we do this. We know how to handle this. Um, and so that's one of the things that you, 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 that's the message you try and get out. Yeah. There are professionals who know how to handle this. There's professionals handling it. And we're going to do the very best um, that we can. By the way, see, thank God, right, that we don't have a socialized health care system Ooh. in the United States, that we have a free enterprise system, because that's what creates the, yeah. you know, something like 40 of the last 50 wonder drugs and vaccines have come from the great, good old USA. And we're ahead of the curve already because of our, our innovation. We're ahead of the curve on on, uh, on vaccines and stuff. Yes, it, is, it takes a while to get vaccine to market. Why? Because we want to make sure it's safe. That's a really good idea, I think, so we will test it on people. Um, but again, we, we know how to do this. You do look at some of the, the European countries, and we sort of sit back and go, you know, if you're already waiting in line now <laughs> five weeks, six weeks for something, and now a couple hundred people get in front of you in line or a thousand people get in front of you in line for, for uh, coronavirus, what does it do to, to your healthcare system? They're already strained uh, because socialist, uh, socialized medicine does not work, and it especially doesn't work in crises like this. There you go. So I want to tell you, I'm going to ask you a tough question, okay? Because you were, uh, I think your first job for, for this president was OMB director. Yes, sir. Okay, 